You good? Yeah, but I got a problem. Something's wrong with this thing. It keeps jamming. See? One, two, three, four, five. Everybody in the car, so come on, let's ride to the liquor store around the corner. The boy said he wants some gin and juice, but I really don't wanna. Louise, what the f The original Gears of War video games contain some very rich and memorable characters in video game storytelling, while creating some awesome and pretty iconic adventures, all taking place in this brutal, horrifying, damaged, beautiful, fictional world called Sarah. And one of the main reasons that made the Gears of War universe so large was due to its great amount of diverse supporting characters. And all the supporting and minor characters in the original games helped bring the universe to life, and were all a major component in creating the illusion of massive scale. But Marcus, you need us here with you. The writers in the original Gears of War games had the ability to create interesting minor supporting characters with a short amount of screen time, where a lot of the characters had a short amount of time to be developed, and yet in the short moments we do see them, spend time and play with these characters, you find yourself more invested in them, and sometimes more invested than the main characters that inhabit most of the feature length of the stories. Gears of War 2's story campaign did this tremendously well. The writing wanted these characters to immediately stand out and make a strong first impression. Ty, good to see you. What are we looking at? Locust Raid, follow me. But one of the most popular minor characters in the entire Gears of War video game franchise is Carmine, or should I say, the Carmines. It's an honor to serve with you, sir. I hear that you're the Sergeant. one who- Sergeant. Yes, sir, uh, Sergeant Phoenix. Must be good to know you're fighting with a Pendulum War hero. First introduced in the original video game known as Anthony, Anthony Carmine was a tertiary character where during the early stages of the story, he's part of a squad on a mission to find a missing squad and acquire important military technology, where during the early stages of the journey, the character gets killed shot in the head by a locust sniper. And like most tertiary characters in stories, they are rarely mentioned, seen, or heard of ever again. But despite a minor role and appearance, the character became oddly and weirdly popular in the Gears of War fandom. Heck, many Gears of War fans argue they are the best characters in the Gears of War universe, which is quite shocking when you really think about it. But how exactly did this character skyrocket to such popularity? What is it that made this extremely unfortunate character and others like him so attractive? Why do many Gears of War video game fans adore this minor supporting character so much? Well, I think I finally cracked the code. That being said, let's begin. One of the biggest reasons that makes Carmine, or again the Carmines, attractive is because they are minor supporting characters that prosper in a very vicarious way. These are characters that don't have any real faces. They are always wearing a helmet and speak in brief, short, and sometimes over-the-top sentences that can be described as cheesy and silly. This is a character that exists in a vivid fashion because of the staging, reactions around them, and the way the world of the stories reflects their character's identity back to them. Carmine is essentially a blank slate, a character that helps individual players connect to the character in their own way. There is no universal truth about them, the characters are very subjective. I believe this is the core creative quality about the Carmines. They are essentially minor vessels for players to help experience what the Gears of War video games have to offer in regards to pure entertainment. Furthermore, Carmine's expressiveness also works quite well. When you have a whole universe that is horrifying, crooked, murky, and brutal, to have a character with a personality to find the fun in things normally is tonally off-putting. But that's what makes the Carmines really stand out. They are not really part of the norm that Gears of War is, or mostly recognized for. 
Now, even though these characters are normally characterized as silly, clumsy, and somewhat dimwitted, this interpretation of them is not always definitive. The characters at heart are green as grass. Well, except Clayton, but we'll get to him later. As for Anthony and Benjamin Carmine, which both are though, they are given writing that transcends their characters quite nicely. Benjamin the most. You see, Anthony in Gears of War was a character that just loved to shoot things and wanted to be a badass like Marcus Phoenix at the battle at Aspho Fields. And even in his very short time on screen, he's given appropriate amounts of exposition before he's killed. So his involvement and presence is justified and doesn't feel like a waste of screen time. The writing makes it clear enough that he does have a legitimate place and position in the story. And he's not just in the story for filler or an over-exaggeration. What the hell, man? Those holes could pop up anywhere! You'd think we would have figured out some kind of goddamn defense by now. Yeah. Command's tried everything, but nothing works. If the Locusts want to come up, they come up. I used to have nightmares about those things when I was a kid. Benjamin, on the other hand, in Gears of War 2, his character gets an origin story. But bear in mind, this can go poorly very, very quickly for a minor supporting character, because in order to make this work, there has to be a correct balance between too much information and too little. Plus, like in movies, it's all about showing a character through action and not spinning out large amounts of expositional dialogue, or dialogue contained as exposition dumb followed by a joke, or covered up with colorful visuals and set pieces and lacks anything human, like these Gears of War games do. Benjamin is elevated to a supporting deuteragonist role and goes through little trials and tribulations alongside the main characters and develops. And over time, he slowly but surely comes into his own, growing out of being the scared and terrified squirt to a hero wanting to save his fellow teammates, while at the same time showing he could be a hero like his brother Anthony from the original. And even in his unfortunate demise, his character still had a love of fire that you felt, regardless if you took the character seriously or not. Uh, I... Uh, I hurt, Sarge. I... Uh... Tell my brothers and my mom. Tell them I love them. You got a brother, was a gear? Yeah, all four of us. Well, three now. You know one of them? I served with Anthony. He was a good soldier. My respects. Thanks. Just good to know he died a hero's death. Uh, yeah, right. Furthermore, another quality that makes Benjamin's character stand out is his activity to the plot. The plot in Gears of War 2 revolves around soldiers uniting together in great desperation to achieve victory at all costs, against a terrifying and evil enemy. Even though Benjamin is not the sharpest tool in the shed and lacks great competency, he has balance of likability and activity in the story to be interesting. Along with persevering enough with the main characters to points where you can't help but be engaged by his character whenever he's on screen. One thing I still don't understand. Have the Locusts been down here, like, forever? Or what? Who knows, man? This one guy in Basic, he thought they were from Risea or one of the moons, and that they feed on emulsion. Hey Marcus, you ever seen them eating emulsion? They can eat shit and die for all I care. Hey shit, Carmine, you alright? I mean, You're awfully God, quiet. Someone's gotta be, to with Baird yapping all the time. As for Clayton Carmine and Gears of War 3, I wasn't too especially fond of. And in terms of character, he was a letdown, and arguably the weakest Carmine of the original three. From what they did to the character and not carrying the same feeling as Benjamin and Anthony in the last games. He plays a similar role as Anthony from the original, which was suitable, but he is portrayed laughably basic, which wasn't a terrible creative choice. I mean, after all, the Carmines are practically jokes, but Clayton could have been given so much more since Gears of War 3 was the final chapter. And considering the facts in the world of the stories, he is the oldest of the three and the most experienced. 
I thoroughly enjoyed Clayton in Gears of War 3's story. His humorous character to alleviate tension was effective and appropriately used. But coming off of a strong predecessor with Benjamin, while at the same time carrying the legacy of Anthony from the original, was a missed opportunity to build on and finish. But since the character's position and fate in the story was put to a public vote, it was understandable why the writers implemented his character the way they did. As I mentioned earlier, the Carmines are subjective. That's their core aspect as characters. So players can make up their own interpretations whether you take them seriously or not. And when it comes to video games, that's a nice quality to have, because it not only makes the video game a little more interesting, but fun. Which is what the Carmines embody in the Gears of War video games. It's a creative shtick that works and serves its purpose well with them. I'm sure when the writers at Epic Games created the Carmines in the original trilogy, they loved the characters and knew exactly what they wanted to do with them and what they wanted to be. And the characters are well fitted in the stories. They're grounded, make you chuckle and laugh at all the right moments with their own issues to deal with. And you really grow to like them. In Gears of War 2, when Benjamin Carmine takes a stand to save his squad so they can escape on the Raven was one of the great feelings for the story and character, and a pleasure to watch. The Carmines are weird characters in the Gears of War video games that really defied expectations, and the originals had good discipline. Minor supporting characters put into the stories and took its time to craft and build them. Who would have thought a minor character who gets killed in a ridiculous fashion would become so much more? about Sherman? Oh, he burned up looking for his car keys in a pool of emulsion. Here they are, I found them. Oh. Ah! Franklin Carmine, hit by a train. Huh? Oh, right. But Gareth. Ah! Okay. Your family is a bunch of irresponsible, idiotic, yahoo rednecks. Whoa, 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 okay, Dr. Phil. Good day, Mr. Carmine. You know what? The Better Business Bureau is going to be hearing from me, pal. Because this is the worst I've ever been treated, alright, man? You're acting like I'm some kind of bullet magnet. Well, you know what? Screw you, pal! Because I'm not getting shot this often. <laughs>